Yo, Elliot, I was hoping to get your thoughts on last Sunday's gospel reading, which was Luke 6, 27 through 30, uh, 38, specifically the last few verses. It says, Jesus said to his disciples, to you who hear, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. He says, I'm struggling to know the line. We talk a lot about setting up boundaries and boundaries and protecting what's ours. For example, I have to travel to Peru a lot where there's a lot of theft and I'm always playing in my head what would I do in a situation where someone tries to steal my phone on the street or tries to steal my girlfriend's phone. Do I let it happen? How do you interpret slash apply in your life this teaching of Jesus in regard to being a man, a father, a husband, and a king? So. A couple weeks ago, we were watching in my Bible study with my kids, uh, Bishop Bar Robert Barron. He's the Bishop of LA. And he has a series that you can find probably on YouTube called Catholicism. And so he basically introduces all aspects of the faith through these. It's probably about, I don't know, 15, 20 different half an hour uh, videos. And one of them, a couple weeks ago, was on the Beatitudes, right? And, and, and Jesus speaking to his disciples about these various things that we're talking about that seem sort of contradictory. And he had a really good way of explaining what is meant here specifically by these words. And because, to be completely honest, I struggle too. I'm like, ah, I don't know, Jesus. I don't know. I don't know if I can do that, right? I, I try my best. I try to understand, I try to apply, but I'm a fallen man, and sometimes I, I struggle, just as you're struggling too. And so Robert, Robert Barron, Bishop Barron, does a really good job of, of sort of unpacking this by using a few different dis, uh, stories from very pious or saintly people that we know of. Now, before I get into two stories in particular that he shared that sort of helps you understand the application of this, he goes on to say or explain that this is not about passivity. It's about active love. And in that active love, it is our intention to turn the heart of the other. So in other words, he's saying, well, you can, you can take A or B, right? Or you could take this road or that road. And he's saying take the middle road. You could take the road of uh, aggression for aggression, right? You know, uh, live by the sword, die by the sword. Like, you know, Peter, at one point, when Jesus was being taken away, prisoner, and he was going to his passion, Peter, right, Peter was a gangster. Peter, like, pulled out his sword. He's like, Christ, I ain't letting these guys take you. He said, I'm not letting them take you. And he pulls out his sword, and he goes to, I think he even chops at one of the guys, and Christ is like, yo, stop, don't do it. Peter doesn't understand. Peter, Peter is his, like his main disciple, his, his top disciple, his main guy. The first one he went to and he said, I'm going to establish my church upon you, Peter, right? He, and so we have the chair of Peter, who is the leader of our church. And he even says to Peter, and the whole thing is to understand, like even Peter, man, he just didn't get it. And that's why I think God has some grace for us for not getting it right away. But anyway, so the whole point is, Christ stops him and says, hey, no, 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 there's, a, there's another way. So there's, there's the aggressive road, and then there's the passive road. The passive road is not a good road either. The passive road is where you let people walk all over, you let people do whatever they want to do, you, do to you, and you just kind of like cower or you whimper or you just keep your mouth shut. Jesus is not asking us to do either of those. He's pointing out that there's a middle way, and it's sort of a, it's, I don't want to use the word passive aggressive, right, but in a way it is, <laughs> right? It's sort of an in-between. And so what he's saying is, or what Robert Barron explained was that it's not about attacking that person, obviously. We don't, we don't attack or we don't do 
bad back to them, but it's not about being soft. It's not about being weak. It's not about being trampled on. It's about mirroring that person's behavior to them in that it might turn their heart. So his whole point was that you don't, you don't uh, fight fire with fire, but you turn that person's, you turn that person's action towards you on them. You take, you deflect. And if you think about even in like my brother and I, my brother is into Kung Fu, right? He's into martial arts. And there's this, uh, this game that he and I used to play and it, and it helped him in his martial arts, right? He did Kung Fu. It was called push hands. And it was this game where we, you know, your hands would be together like this and we'd push. And the idea was to knock over your opponent. But the trick with this game was you got to stay, you got to keep your feet and you go back and forth. And at some point, someone's going to aggress. And it's usually the person that aggresses that falls because if the other person is sensitive, they'll use that person's strength against them, right? So if you could just imagine, you know, two guys going back and forth, right, this is what we do, and then say, I get to the point where it's like, ah, I try to push, right? I try to push on him, I try to aggress upon him. My brother might yield, right? He might yield away, and then boom, you fall to the ground. So it's sort of a, it's the power of yielding in order to trip the other person up. This is, this is kind of what Bishop Barron was explaining, and I'm trying to use this push hands example as a, as a means for you to physically understand that there's power in yielding, but that yielding isn't a, isn't a cowering, it's a full engagement. I'm fully engaged, I'm using my yielding as a means to overcome you, right? If I push, my brother yields, boom, it's through that yielding that I'm overcome. So he wins through the yielding. So Bishop Barron's trying to explain what Jesus is saying here by, by having you understand that this is, not, this is not a passive yielding, it's an active yielding. And the yielding is such that you use that person's energy against them. You use that person's aggression against them. You don't use your aggression, right? If, if we're doing push hands and my brother pushes and I push, we're, we're at a standstill. All you need is one person to go like that, boom, and the other guy falls. So he's pointing out that there's, there's no value in fighting fire with fire that way because then you're both stuck, right? And if the other person's just a limp noodle, well, then there's, there's no engagement here going on and the other person doesn't learn anything. It just pushes you over. It's like, oh, hey, done. get out of here. Steps on you and walks away. So that's the, it, to, to, to sort of understand the context or the big picture of what is trying to be explained here. And, and mind you, these aren't my words. This is, I didn't come up with this, right? Because I struggle just like you. But this is Bishop Barron. That push hands was mine. But this is Bishop Barron explaining that it's a mirroring. It's turning that person's aggression against them. Not fighting aggression with aggression, but turning it against them. So he gives two examples of this. One example, Mother Teresa. He says, this is, this is something Mother Teresa did. He says, Mother Teresa, who, as you know, was... Uh, she helped orphans. She helped poor children, right? And so apparently she was walking into a store one day, you know, wanted to get some food for a poor child, right? And so she's poor herself, too, because she was a cloistered nun. She was, you know, she didn't have money. And she's trying to give everything she had to these children. So she walks in with this child, like she finds off the street, into the bakery. And she says to the guy behind the counter, um, could you spare some bread for this child? And the man behind the counter spits in her face and goes, get out of here, right? Like, come on, leave me alone. I'm trying to conduct a business here, bringing this nasty kid in. And he spits in her face, right? And so you can imagine, like, whoa, that's an act of aggression. As the story goes, Mother Teresa receives a spit in her face and says, thank you for that, sir. Do you have something for the child? So in other words, she uses his aggression to shame him into seeing his foolishness, right? Because if she, he was to spit and she walked out, put her head down and walked out and, uh, and took the child, he would have been like, damn right, get out of here. Or if he, she would have spit back, it would have been fire for fire. It would have been a struggle and the child wouldn't have gotten anything. But instead, she receives the blow, but then comes back to him. So when Jesus says, 
turn the other cheek. He's not saying, okay, just beat me up, right? Oh, you hit me here, hit me there. What Jesus is saying, and apparently this is a cultural thing, right, at the time when it came to like slapping people. <laughs> it's kind of like what guys did. I think I remember watching like movies from the 1950s too. And I think I remember hearing this that was like, and this is kind of an aside. If, like men, for their friend's sake, if they were ever acting up, you ever have a friend that's acting just too emotional? Back in the day, it was like, it was acceptable to slap your friend, like, snap out of it. What are you doing? What are you talking about, right? So, but it was, I don't know if I'm getting this totally right, but it, he explains this in there. So there, if somebody slaps you, right, back in the day, they, it was like, it was bad to touch people with your left hand or something like that. I, I'm not getting this totally right. But there was a way that you slap people. Let me put it that way. There was a way that you slap people and there was a way that you don't slap people. And so if you were to slap somebody, it would be on their right, it would be on their right cheek, right? It would be typically like, boom, you slap them on their right cheek. Well, Jesus, when he says turn your other cheek, he's basically in a way saying, now taunt him by turning the other cheek and saying, now are you going to slap me with your other hand? Like, are you going to go that far? Are you really that disgusting, that deplorable, that you'll now slap my other cheek, right? Because in the context of the story, which we don't understand because we weren't there, that that would have been like a sign of like throwing it in your face. Like, oh, you slap me here? In the same way Mother Teresa kind of threw the spit back in his face without spitting in his face. She was like, okay, fine. And she received it, but then she persisted. Do you have something for the child now? Now, what are you going to do? You're going to spit in the kid's face? And so the guy, you know, hopefully most people have very little remorse or moral sense of uh, dignity today. So they'll be like, yeah, ah, spit in the kid's face. But, but, the, but the idea, the hope is that in seeing his folly, that he will repent of his ways. There's another story, a second story. He says that, uh, I think it's Bishop, some black bishop in South Africa, maybe Desmond Tutu, something like that, right? I don't remember for sure. But he was a black guy in South Africa, and of course, you know, there was apartheid, and there was a lot of racism going on and stuff. And so he's walking down the street, and a white guy comes, and I guess they have to like, you know, you know you're walking on the street, and somebody's coming up to you, right? You're both going opposite directions. You yield, right? And so the white guy comes up to him, and they walk, you know, face to face, and he says, the white guy says to him, I don't, get, I don't move out of the way for gorillas, right? Like basically saying like, you black gorilla, right? So he receives that, that, uh, that uh, those words, right? That curse, that, that mean thing. He said that mean thing to him, right? He walks up and he says, I ain't moving out of the way for no gorilla, right? And so the, the bishop, the, the Desmond Tutu says, oh, but I do. And then he steps off the curb and lets the guy go. So in other words, he didn't, he didn't throw his insult back at him. He just mirrored the insult through his behavior. He said, oh, well, you're not going to move out the way from me. I'll move out the way for you. You the one that said gorilla. Tutu or whoever it was, black guy, didn't say gorilla. He just said, oh, I will. Boom. He got out of the way. So it was a way of not fighting with him, like saying, well, you're Something bad too, right? What are you gonna, what's he gonna call the white guy? You're a white devil, right? <laughs> you cracker, right? So he could say that back to him, but then that's again, it's push hands. <laughs> Nobody gets anywhere. He yielded, he goes whoop, and watch that guy fall if he has any sense of moral dignity, which who knows. So, I mean, a big, I think a big part of this would be. Faith in the father that other people have a sense of integrity and dignity, which is, is hard to, is really, you can't, you can't assume. But the point is that what Jesus is saying here is, is not to fight fire with fire, but not to yield and, 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 and be weak, but instead show that person their sins by mirroring it back to them, right? So... If somebody steals your thing, right, with the tunic and all that, somebody is trying to steal your thing, and then you just say, okay, fine. Are you going to take that? Boom, take all this. And you stand there and look at him. That person, depending, right, either really needed that and they just, they didn't know any other way to go about getting what they needed. And maybe we need to pray for that person. Or they'll be like, 
man, I can see. So there's a, there's a story. I don't, I'm not getting this right. You know, this is, I'm new to a lot of this stuff, too. I'm not far ahead of you guys when it comes to, you know, understanding the Bible and Christianity and stuff. I, of course, I find things I become obsessed with, so I, I, I study, but I'm not that far ahead of you guys. So I, can't, I don't know exactly these stories, but I think there's a story where one of the disciples, one of, one of Jesus' students, is uh, being taken away by a guard, right? Maybe like a Roman, a Roman guard. He says, all right, come with me. And the story goes that because he didn't fight, right? He didn't yield. He didn't like, he didn't like fight with him. He was received by the guard and was able to evangelize to him, right? He turned the guard's heart around by not fighting with him. I don't know if that's a true story or not, but it's something I think I remember. There's another one also. There's a story of a, I, I don't know who it was, maybe Polycarp? I, I don't know. But there's a, there's a saint. There's another Catholic saint who was in the presence of a, a Turkish king, right? Or like an Arab king. Maybe it, was, maybe it was Muslim, right? Maybe it was after the Muslims. But this guy wanted to kill him. He was like killing all these guys. He was like, yeah, just get, kill these Christians. Get, get, get them all, get rid of them. And so this one comes and rather than fighting, rather than, rather than cowering and denying his Lord, he just stands there and he smiles. I think he's singing, right? He's singing on his way to his death. And so the, you know, the Ottoman king was like, what's up with this guy? This guy is amazing. He, so he, his heart was turned towards him. I think he may have actually killed him anyway, but like he had an epiphany in that moment which may have saved his soul. You know, I don't know. So I don't know what you're supposed to do when you go to Peru <laughs> and the little kids come and try to steal your phone. That's up to you in the moment what you got to do. Uh, but in, uh, in order to better understand what Jesus is saying, I would invite you to check out Bishop Barron. Uh, on YouTube, his Catholicism series, the one where he talks about the Beatitudes. And of course, this isn't the Beatitudes, but I think it's in the same, the same video. He talks about the Beatitudes, because basically in that, in that video, he's trying to like unpack the seeming contradictions or the tough things that Jesus says that like we have to wrestle with as people. So you might want to go watch that. He talks about those two stories. And then just consider my push hands uh, example, right? When you push against someone who's pushing, you can't win. You can't win. It's a lot of wasted energy. But if you use that person's energy against them, you use their aggression against them, you, you, you win, which is very different than allowing them to push you over, right? You have to be, you have to basically martyr yourself, right? Which some people do. In order to be pushed over, you have to. You, th that's that's not helpful at all to just let somebody push you over because you never you don't win, right? And the whole idea here is it's a spiritual war, so we win over that person's heart. You don't win over anybody's heart by being a weakling, right? They, in fact, they'll have more disdain for you. This filthy, nasty weakling, right? Weakling. Before I go, I just have one more little story I want to share with you guys because I was thinking about this the other day. My daughter, she was struggling in school a couple years ago with, you know, kids that were saying mean things to her, right? And it really, it broke her up. She was like, oh, it was a big deal to her. And since then, she's learned a lot about how to deal with people. And so the other day we were having a conversation. She kind of brought that up. And because we had been, I don't know what we were doing or my I think Colleen was homeschooling them on, you know, like animals or something. And they learned, my kids learned that if you see a bear, because we have bears around here. If you see a bear and you come face to face with the bear, the last thing you want to do is run. If you see a bear come face to face with a bear and you run, that bear is going to lick his chops. He's going to say, I got you now. He's going to come chase you down and he will catch you because he's faster than you. <laughs> So if you run away from a bear, he's going to catch you, he's going to eat you up, and he's going to love every bit of it. But if you stand your ground, and if a bear, if you see a bear and you start going, whoo, ha, ha, right? The bear will be like, oh, okay, 
no problem, bro. And the bear will back off and go away. And we said this, I used that as an analogy when I was explaining uh, what would happen if she was in a situation again where the kids were te teasing her. I said, if you, just like with the bear, if kids are teasing you and you run away, they're going to come after you. They're going to love it. They're like, look at this little weakling. They're going to come after you licking their chomps. They're going to want to tear you up even more. But if you stand your ground, right, not, just like the bear, it, he, it's not about fighting. It's about making your presence known. Hey, I'm here. I'm here. Here I am. Right? If you can do that, the bear will say, okay, chill. He'll respect you. He'll respect you a little bit better and be like, all right, I ain't, ain't going to mess with you. The bear might not even be afraid of you. Like, oh, the bear is not going to go and cower, right? But the bear might be like, okay, I respect you. That's the whole thing with what Jesus is saying to his disciples in a way also. He says, stand your ground in a respectable manner so that they don't come after you even more because they will. <laughs> So that's my understanding of that, dude. Hope that helps. Done. Yo, are you ready to become a king in your life? If so, I'm looking for a few more guys that I can work closely with in order to help them dominate in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, then just go over to my Instagram account and DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. My team will get back to you with the details. If you're able to message me today, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to work closely with me. So DM me the word king on my Instagram and I'll get back to you with the details right away.